In this video, I'll go through task five of ISP um, part, the on particle physics, uh, which is part of unit four of LXL A2 physics. Okay, so task five, just as a series of questions, uh, mainly based around the idea of particle accelerators and particle collisions. Right, so let's have a look at the questions. I've just gone past it there. So the first question, <coughs> whoops, is it? is uh, based on a linear accelerator um, and talks about the discovery of quarks at the um, Stanford Linear Accelerator um, and it um, asks, it's, it's got a nice picture of one there with the idea of drift tubes um, which are connected together and there's, uh, there's terminals over here. So what is connected between terminals T1 and T2? So remember it's a high frequency um, voltage essentially, it needs to be high frequency potential difference Okay, and it needs to be an alternating potential difference Okay. Um, on alternating voltage. The idea is, is that allows these to therefore have a charge, which means there's an electric field in between the drift tubes, not in the drift tubes, but electric field between the drift tubes, which can accelerate the particles. So the first one comes from a high frequency alternating voltage, or you could say a high frequency square wave of voltage, because we know it must be a sort of like a set voltage each time, so it ends up being like a square wave. <coughs> okay, um, so B um, asks about uh, why the electrons travel constant velocity while in the cylinder. So as I just mentioned, there's no electric field in the cylinders. The, you know, there's, so there's no force. Remember, acceleration only takes place where there is an electric field. Okay, because there's a definition of electric field, an area in which a charged particle experiences a force. So there's no electric field inside these. They're shielded to prevent that from happening. Okay, um, so therefore there's no force in there uh, because there's no electric field. Explain what a cylinder is gradually increasing in length along the accelerator. Well, it's all to do with the fact that the particles themselves are accelerating. As they accelerate, they get faster and faster and faster, but you want them to be inside the tube for the same amount of time. The reason why we want them for the same amount of time in there is so that we can keep this voltage, sorry, this alternating voltage at the same frequency. Okay, because if that's kept at the same frequency, we don't need to play around when electrons or protons are in different places. Okay, essentially, you keep it at a set frequency. Um, so you make the tubes longer, so the time spent in each tube is the same. Um, and the reason why they need to be longer is because uh, the, the particles now get faster and faster and faster. Right, 18. 18 is uh, a lovely question on Rutherford scattering. Comes up very often, um, a, a big five or six mark question on this. So make sure you can actually answer the question on it. Okay. The, the question is really asking for us to talk about the experiment or observations that he actually had. Um, and explain how they led to, to his deduction. Okay, but you've really sort of got to state what actually was taking place as well. Okay, so always start the Rutherford, um, Rutherford scattering questions with the idea that alpha particles are fired at a metal film inside a vacuum. Okay, so you can name the metal, it can be gold. Okay, but you've got to state that somewhere. I'd always state that in my first line. Alpha particles were fired at um, a gold leaf or a gold film in a vacuum. Okay. Outline the observations. So the observations were most went straight through. Um, a few were deflected through large angles, um, and that suggests because it was saying explain how this led to, to this deduction. So the idea now you've got to link that to the fact that um, the charge of the atom was in a very small space and was um, confined. So a dense positive charge or dense charge that was concentrated that's the idea there okay so it's very easy quick five marks to pick up okay so alpha particles fire that metaphor inside of a vacuum two marks probably attached to that um one for saying the experiment alpha particles in, in at a metal film second mark for saying vacuum um then about saying most going straight through that will get your mark that will always get you a mark um and then saying that some were deflected back um, along the original path will always get your marks, that's four marks there. And then the deduction, so that's essentially saying it was a densely um, concentrated positive charge, or densely concentrated charge in the centre of this atom would get your fifth mark. Alright, question 19. <clears throat> so question 19 is talking about a famous experiment that was done by Co Cockcroft and Walton, um, where they accelerated uh, protons through a potential difference of 300 kilo volts. So it's got a 300 kilo electron volts of energy. Okay, um, so it's going to a heck of a lot of energy that 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 um, the the protons what well, for their day anyway. 
uh, they found that two alpha particles were produced. The energy of the alpha particles was subsequently ca calculated from the tracks they made in, in a cloud chamber. Complete the nuclear equation for this event. Okay, so what they did is they bombarded a lithium um, nucleus with protons. So what lithium-7-3, um, we're bombarding it with a proton. So protons has, have numbers of one and one, because there's one neutron and a proton, and one proton. Oh, sorry, I just realized you can't see any of this. There we go. So seven and three, uh, one proton and a neutron and one proton. So that's the numbers there. Remember, one nucleon and one proton it has. Um, even though we're re referencing the same particle, we still write it as, as that. Helium is what's created. Um, but there's two of those heliums. And remember, the numbers of helium are four and two. Okay, so all the numbers add up. Okay, there's eight across the top on this side. There's an eight across the top on this side. There's four across the bottom on this side. There's four across the bottom on this side. Perfect. Okay, <clears throat> state two uh, other properties and additions to momentum that are conserved in such a process. It talks about the fact that um, uh, momentum is conserved. Um, so the other idea that's conserved, it, you can't just say energy. Okay, you've got to say mass energy if you're going to say it. Okay, mass stroke energy. Sometimes if you're lucky, they'll let you get away with just saying energy, but say mass energy because at the end of the day, mass is just stored energy. But say mass slash energy as one of the things that's conserved. And the other one is always charge. Always charge. Right. Um, nice question now on e equals mt squared. <clears throat> so saying use the data to show um, that the energy release in this process is approximately 2.8 times 10 to the minus 12. Now there's a similar question on the last one. Um, so the idea you're looking at is the mass difference between this and this. So figure out essentially what the mass difference is, the change in mass from that. So you want the mass of those two things and you want the mass of that and then you want to take one away from the other. So let's call this mass before and mass after. So mass, change in mass, sorry, is equal to mass before minus mass after, but it's all going to be in U. So once you've done this bit, once you've done this bit, convert out of U. At that point, once you've got your change in mass, convert out of U, okay, and get it into kilograms. So then you move from U to kilograms as your unit, okay? As soon as you've done that, you put it into equals mc squared, and you've got your answer. Okay, so show me questions so you should be able to see whether you got it right. But there's your process. Let me zoom out a bit more. There's your process. Okay, so mass before, mass after. Move this bigger. Okay, mass before, mass after. Take one, uh, take one away from the other. Um, it's probably be uh, before has more energy than after because um, energy could be released in this situation. Is what they're saying. If I remember correctly, um, and then you need to convert the unit from U into kg, and then put that into equals mc squared. Nice question to get. Um, again, they're usually worth four marks. Remember the one in the last high speed task was four marks. Let's move the webcam out of the way. Go, uh, so look, yeah, four marks again. Let's check that as the right one. Yep, four marks again. Right. So hence, uh, discuss the extent to which Cockroft and Walton. Uh, Walter's result confirms um, Einstein's prediction that E equals mc squared. <clears throat> okay, so the incoming proton had um, energy of 300 kilo, kilo electron volts if we looked up. So the total energy is um, the 17.4 from before added to the 300 kilo electron volts or 0.3 mega electron volts. Um, sorry, I've got to show you where that 17 before came from. I've got it from before in terms of my notes from the side over here, but I've got to show you where that actually came from. Um, and, um, yeah, so you add the two energies together, um, and then you differ by a small result. And you differ by a very small amount. Um, and that means um, that there's strong evidence for the simply squared. Let me show you that. I think the mark scheme shows a bit than my notes, and then understanding my webcam, I'm pretty sure my notes won't show very well, uh, well up in pencil underneath there, so I'll show it to you here. Here we go. So yeah, here's that 1.74 times 10 to the 7 I was on about. So we take this difference in energy that we've got and we figure out how many um, electron volts that is. So it ends up being 17.4 mega electron volts. So we add that to the energy that actually originally came in, so 0.3 mega electron volts or 300 kilo electron volts, as it says there. So that's the total energy. See, so now you look at the difference in the energies, okay? And the difference in the energy is only about 3%. So very small difference in the energies, and therefore a strong evidence uh, of Einstein's predictions. A tricky question for those final five marks. 
Uh, I'm guessing the majority of you guys probably got through the first part of this, the second part of it, that's trickier. Okay, and that uh, finishes the particle physics ISP. Okay, um, so if you've done the uh, further mechanics and EM fields ISP before this, as you should have, um, to follow the correct order through here, through this, um, you've finished the entirety of Unit 4. Um, so good luck in your exam. Thank you very much for watching.